Right, in this video, we're going to talk about rational equations and how to solve them. Uh, in, the pre in the previous two videos uh, that I posted about rational functions and equations, de dealt more with graphs of them. In this case, in this uh, video, we're going to talk about how to solve these types of equations, and we're going to get actual solutions for these equations. The big thing that you need to know here is what least common denominator is, because we're going to multiply each term on both the left and the right sides of the equation by the LCD to eliminate our denominators of our fractions or, or of our rational terms here. So if we look here at this example here, x plus 6 divided by x minus 8 equals 0, we're going to find out, we're first going to find out what the least common denominator is. Denominator here is 1, denominator here is x minus 8, denominator of 0 is just 1. So 1, x minus 8, and well, we don't really need to worry about anything on the other side. So our LCD is just x minus 8, okay? So we're going to multiply x times x minus 8. We're going to multiply 6 divided by x minus 8 by x minus 8. And we're going to multiply 0 by x minus 8. And what happens here is when we multiply the, the first term by x minus 8, we get x squared minus 8x. Now the interesting thing here happens with this term. x minus 8 times 6 divided by x minus 8. The x minus 8 simplify out. And we're left with a plus 6 equals 0 times x minus 8. 0 times anything is 0. And now we have a quadratic equation without a denominator. We don't have a denominator, we just got rid of the denominator. Okay? This equation here, we have many methods to solve that. We can use completing the square, we can use the quadratic formula. It's up to you what method you want to choose. In this case, I'm going to use the uh, completing the square method. And to do the completing the square method first, we have to get this plus 6 to the other side. So we'll subtract 6 from both sides of the equation, leaving us with x squared minus 8x equals negative 6. Now, in order to use do the completing the square method, we need to create a perfect square trinomial on this left side of the equation. To complete the square here for this expression, we need to take half of negative 8 and square it, and that's the number we're going to add to both sides. Half of negative 8 squared negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, squared is 16. So we're going to add 16 to both sides of the equation, giving us x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals negative 6 plus 16 is 10. Now what we did here is we made a perfect square trinomial, so we can factor it as such. And then we can solve it by taking square roots. We can take the square root of the left side and, to, and the right side to eliminate that power of 2. But when you introduce a square root, you have to include the plus or minus sign. And on the left here, we're just left with x minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 10. Add 4 to both sides, giving us x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 10. This plus or minus really means there's two solutions. It means x is 4 plus the square root of 10, and x equals 4 minus the square root of 10. But we consolidate it by using the plus or minus notation. If we were to take this solution here, 4 plus or minus the square root of 10, one of them, and substitute them back into our original equation, you would see that they would both work and they would both be valid solutions. You wouldn't have an extraneous solution in this case. So these are your answers right there. Right. Let's move on to a second example here, a little bit more complicated example.
Okay, here is our second example. Here, we have 4 divided by x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 3x divided by x minus 2 plus 2 divided by x minus 4. All right. Again, the key here to this equation is a least common denominator. Most everything falls back to a least common denominator. Now, in these terms here, we have x squared, in our denominators, we have x squared minus 6x plus 8, x minus 2, and x minus 4. Let's look at the factorization of x squared minus 6x plus 8, because that might have a factor that we might need. That factored here, believe it or not, is x minus 2 times x minus 4. Our least common denominator is going to be x minus 2 times x minus 4, or x squared minus 6x plus 8. So what we need to do here is multiply all, everything on both sides of the equation by this product, x minus 2 times x minus 4, or x squared minus 6x plus 8. Okay. So when we multiply, well first off our LCD is x squared minus 6x plus 8. So we'll multiply this side here by x squared, let me write it a little bit, write it how it happened. We'll multiply this by x squared minus 6x plus 8. Multiply this first term by x squared minus 6x plus 8. And this term here by x squared minus 6x plus 8. Now what happens here? These denominators go away and you're left with a 4 equals 3x divided by x minus 2. Factored, right? We're going to come up with x minus 2 times x minus 4. So our x minus 2's go away. We have plus 2 divided by x minus 4. Again, factored, that's going to be x minus 2 times x minus 4, and the x minus 4s go away. So we're really left with 4 equals 3x times x minus 4 plus 2 times x minus 2. Simplified, we get 4 equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 2x minus 4. And combining terms here, we get 4 equals 3x squared minus 10x minus 4. And then if we bring this 4 to the other side, we get 0 equals 3x squared minus 10x minus 8. So now we have a quadratic equation. Um, which we can solve by the quadratic formula, or we could even do factoring here. I'm going to say factoring here is the easier of the, the options uh, because you could factor it um, really, really nicely. All right, factoring ter factoring method here that we're going to use is something that uh, some some uh, schools call master factor. I, I call them muds because. Uh, MUDS is really nice. Uh, I learned about the MUDS acronym instead of Master Factor from a colleague of mine a few years ago and I use that acronym a lot. Uh, the MUDS method is multiply, unfoil, divide, simplify, and slide. So uh, that's going to factor pretty much any quadratic expression here, quadratic trinomial, where the coefficient of x squared isn't 1. So the first step is to multiply. We're going to multiply 3 and negative 8 and get negative 24. Now we're going to think about what our factors are that have a product of negative 24 and a sum of negative 10. Well that's going to be negative 12 and positive 2. So when we unfoil this, we're going to get 0 equals x minus 12 times x plus 2. The D in MUD stands for divide. We're going to divide negative 12 and 2 by this 3 here, the leading coefficient. 
The first S is simplify. Simplify what you can. 12 over 3 can simplify. And as 4. So we have x minus 4. 2 thirds does not simplify any further. So we'll slide that 3. S is the, the last S is slide. We'll slide that 3 in front of the x and we'll get 3x plus 2. All right. I should note this method can only be used after you factored out a GCF. Uh, because there wasn't a GCF that we could factor out here, we just jumped right into it. And now we have two binomials, the product of two binomials equals zero, so that means either x minus 4 equals zero or 3x plus 2 equals zero. So x minus 4 equals zero, so x equals 4, or 3x plus 2 equals zero, or x equals negative two-thirds. Now, something that we need to look at here. Let's look at our original equation here. Our LCD here is x squared minus 6x plus 8, or x minus 2 times x minus 4. These values are in our denominator. So if we set these equal, each of these equal to 0, that's going to give us our domain restrictions. So our domain restrictions are as follows. x cannot be 2 or 4, because if we set x minus 2 equal to 0, we get x equals 2. And when we set x minus 4 equal to 0, we get x equals 4. Those are our domain restrictions. But look at what one of the solutions is that we get. We get x equals 4. Well, that's a problem because if x is 4, we create a division by 0 here. And division by 0 is not fun, all right? Um, it's actually undefined at that value. So this value here, x equals 4, is an extraneous solution. All right? And then, if we were to check out our other solution, x equals negative 2 thirds, and substituted that value into the original equation, you would find that that solution would work and satisfy that equation. All right, so that's the gist of rational equations. Again, the key, number one, is the least common denominator. Find out what the least common denominator is first, and then multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. And then if you're, since we're dealing with rational or fractional uh, equations here, you have to take a look at the domain restrictions, all right? Because if we come up with a value for x that would make a division by zero, create a division by zero, then we're we're really in trouble. We have a big we have a big problem here. Um, that's all I have on rational equations. Thanks for watching.